top of the morning to you. Uh, yeah, frosty start. Getting blinded by the sun here, but anyway. Yeah, frost just starting to lift. It would have been minus, I don't know, one or two or something. But yeah, it's, uh, it is winter, but it's going to be a cracking day. We've had a couple of rippers, actually, so... Um, it wasn't as frosty yesterday morning, but it was a beautiful day, so... Uh, anyway, we're going to... Still pretty wet underfoot here, so... Another, yeah, another ten days or fortnight of this would be... Um, yeah, just what we need. It'll get get pastures moving and get the crops moving, and um, yeah, look, hopefully, come the end of the week, we might have um, might be able to get on a few paddocks and and uh, yeah, get a bit of spraying and and um, the last of spreading and that sort of stuff done. So, but yeah, the guys Tony and Brendan are just um, Brendan pulled the old fence down last week, so. The guys are just up there with the telehandler just pulling the posts out. It's a, bit, it's a two man job. Um, and yeah, but we're going to get run these, the last lot of ewes and lambs in this morning and, and get them marked. So uh, yeah, that's today's plan. But I was just waiting for the frost and dew to bugger off a little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get organised in here and um, yeah, run them in. Okay. I'll just give you a rundown on what we the process of what we do with the lambs and yeah we'll get a bit of footage of it later but uh, when we mark them or what we call marking so basically they get a vac gets get vaccinated so that's it's really no different to vaccinating your kids um, but obviously for oh hello for uh, sheep diseases um, ah it's there. Sorry, we just uh, had the boss come out. Oh uh, yeah, so that's, vaccine's no different to um, basically sheep diseases, exactly the same as like what we vaccinate our kids and all the rest of it. They'll get one now and then they'll get another booster at, um, well, the lambs that have been, um, were done back in, marked back in June. And then when we wean, or when we shear the lambs, we'll give them another one then. So they'll, they'll get two shots of that in their lifetime. Um, breeding ewes, we give, give a vaccine every year. So um, that's that one. The Gadare, it is, and that's actually frozen, which is an ideal. Um, it's for the sheep wasting disease over on Yoni. So I'll just set this up. See me here. Um, so it's got a gun like that and it's actually, it's a bit of a nasty one and uh, until they sort of, someone, some clever bugger designed this fancy injecting gun to, to administer it, but it's a bit like, um, a needle stick injury with this stuff is a bit like getting bitten by a white tail spider if you're in Australia, so, um, pretty nasty. So what they've actually done is if they've come up with this gun and what it actually does, it can't, you can't actually um, stick yourself with it. So you've got a, it's got a protective end, which you can see, which is protected by this sheath here. So, um, so that goes in behind their ear. We only do the um, U portion um, because they're actually going to go on to be breeders. The weather portion, they'll go to slaughter at some stage. So, um, so they're the two needles that we give them. We used to take a physical ear notch out of the corner of their ear with this gizmo. So we've gone away from doing that. Just, it's a tricky one because it would, it would actually physically, you could physically identify um, that uh, if a lamb got boxed in with the neighbors, it was yours. Where we're running into trouble is, is with theft. And um, we now just put one of these ear tags in, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we used to do that, actually visually take a chunk out of the corner of the ear of the lamb. So we've stopped doing that now. So um, what we do now is we've just put an ear tag in it. So um, right hand side for the females and left hand side for the males. These are NLIS tags. So that black bit has got a microchip in it um, that we can scan, scan the, the animal um, and, you know, keep essentially have lifetime traceability um, on the lambs, so the, the trick with the only thing with these ones, things are that's got our, well, you probably can't, oh, you might be able to see it there, so that's got our property name on it and 
Um, we've got a unique identification code for our, our property. Um, every property's got one. Um, and then what we do, because we're only vaccinating the ewes with the Gadare, um, we the, the ewe um, tags are different to the weather tags. They've got a little V, which you might be able to see there on there, just to do, identify that they've had the um, Gadare vaccine. So. So yeah, so the colour is the year they're born. So red's obviously um, 2023. Uh, I'm not too sure, it might have been light blue or white last year. So um, yeah, every year has got a colour so you can identify when you're selling ewes or, you know, we've got purple and green and yellow tags um, in our breeding ewes so we can identify what colour they are. And then we've got a fancy gun here, rapid fire gun that, um, pull the trigger and it, and it shoots that pin through the ear um, to administer the tag. Um, not too sure what happened then, the lights have just gone out. Uh, so, now the phone wants to ring. Oh. All right, we'll have another go. So, ear tags and the ears, um, and then tails and testicles. So some clever bugger we used to hang on. Back again, I forgot about these. So what we do is we put a little green rubber ring, a lacerator ring we call it, um, on their tail um, and on their on the testicles of the weathers. So why we do that with the tails, obviously, <coughs> um, we shorten the tail up, we bring it back to about yay long so they can still wiggle their tail to shoe flies and that sort of stuff, but it just stops, um, you know, poo and shit and all the rest of it building up on their backsides and then um, stops fly strike, essentially. Um, and then their testicles, um, we're not breeding stud rams, so it basically stops interbreeding. Um, uh, yeah, is, is, is the main reason we do it. Um, and also, there's an argument, I suppose, with the um, testosterone in, in meat and, and taints the meat and that sort of stuff um, when they're going to slaughter. What we've got here, someone has designed um, now is uh, a local anaesthetic that we administer when we put the, put the ring on the tail. So I'll just show you this quickly. So you put that on there and that expands and then you slip the tail through there or the testicles. And then what, once we've got that on, we've actually, oh, I'm gonna to to take that ring off, hang on. There's actually a needle comes out and we can see that into the needle. Um, and we just push the, push the plunger and administer um, a local anesthetic to both the tail and the testicles. And basically they, it doesn't, by doing that now, that it doesn't really affect the lamb at all. So um, it comes in a. We've got to get this stuff through the vets. Um, it's a product called well, it's called Numacane, um, and it's got a basically got a safety lock on the top of it, um, so you can't actually get into the bottle. Um, and yeah, we just that that uh, if I push that, hang on, I can give it a twist and push it in, and then that just locks in to the top of the bottle. And then we can administer the, the, the local anaesthetic, excuse me. So that's about it. Um, one, once we get going, um, I've got a bit of footage from the previous ones we've, we've done. I'd actually started another video, but I just thought I'd, I'd basically start from scratch and explain it a bit better because I'd forgotten. It's a while ago, it's a couple of months ago when I started the other one. So there'll be a bit of footage from, a um, bit of time lapse and a bit of other footage from um, when we've, marked in the past, but it'll try and get a bit, um, yeah, for today. So anyway, that's uh, that's what it's all about. Well, uh, yeah, the, the frost and, and juice nicked off. We'll um, get the buggy and round up some critters.
Hey, Neil. Anesthetic in. And that's all for that one. So just fall out like that. And the other one, oh, I can do him here. He comes down as well. So. Come here. So he goes in the right ear. No, the left ear, sorry. Left. You can see. See how this, how dirty the tail is, and how you can imagine if we leave that tail there, how dirty it will get. So same thing on about the third joint. Push the plunger in. Would you be quiet over there, please? Ned. And then one on his testicles, and we can feel feel both of them are there. Again with the plunger for the anaesthetic. In, we're just running through the footpath. Um, you would have heard me talking about soft feet and that sort of stuff. So the water we've got a mixture is uh, zinc sulfate and actually formaldehyde. Um, yeah, really clears the sinuses, but it's um, fantastic for hardening feet up. So we'll just walk them through this a couple of times. Um, it's the first time they've been through it. These ewes, being young ewes, so they're a bit disorderly, but. Generally, the older you use, they'll just walk through it quietly. Um, once you walk them through a couple of times, they generally get the get the hang of it. So, uh, yeah. So, husband and wife team here. We're not haven't had a blue yet, so we don't often do sheep work together. So, 
uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get, the, get this lot through and just using the prodder here as a poker more so than a electric charge, we just use it to poke them and um, rather than because it splashes this stuff you don't really want to get it on you if you can help it. So anyway, we'll get these, these ones done. Well, that's another day about cooked. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, hope that one, you got a bit out of that one and and just the process and it is a bit labor intensive that, like each lamb's got to be picked up and, and put through that little cradle, but um, we're actually a man short. Generally there's, uh, what is there, there's usually five of us. Um, and yeah, you sort of get through about 150 an hour. Um, yeah, when you're marking, when everything's going to plan and they're not too big and some of these were, were a little bit big, they're actually lambs out of the early lambing ewes that um, we've already, that we did, you know, six weeks ago. So there were some big fellas that didn't actually fit in the cradle that we had to do. A um, couple of things, uh, some of you might find that a bit cruel or suppose that's the word that's it's just part of the animal husbandry one thing that it has improved at 100 is that uh that local anesthetic um and i suppose to try and stay apolitical um i suppose my opinion on it is that now that that technology is available like we've been using it three years i think now now that that technology is available my opinion is that sort of stuff should be made mandatory um you know, we're constantly under attack from green groups, animal um, liberation groups, that sort of stuff. Um, it would be really good as a sheep industry, as a sheep producer, you know, as farmers to be proactive and say, right, we want to bring this in, make it mandatory for people to use. And it's the cost of it's insignificant really, like it might be a dollar a head, maybe something like that. So look, it doesn't cost a lot and the animal is a lot better for it. They do mother up a lot better. Like in the past, you would see them rolling around on the ground, um, that sort of stuff. Whereas now they're all standing up, um, you know, and when you open the gates to let them back out with their mums, they mother up straight away. And yeah, so it's, there is definitely a hundred percent benefit um, by using it. But I just wish, you know, rather than being bloody reactive in our industry, which is just it's time and time again, um, it would be really good if, you know, the guys that we pay our levies to and that sort of stuff with when we sell lambs and sell wool and all the rest of it would just be proactive and say, righto, we want to push for a mandatory implementation and usage of this stuff when when marking lambs so anyway that's just my two cents so uh anyway thanks again for watching uh gonna be frosty one again in the morning the way it feels um yeah back spreading a bit of urea in the next few days hopefully uh stock to feed and um, yeah a bit other bit other stuff so plenty happening uh, anyway keep watching uh thanks for liking and the comments and keep subscribing and we'll catch you on the next one Ta -da.